So this project is for the same customer that ordered the bench, which was last week's video. This is actually going to be essentially a wall accent behind the bench. It's made out of the same um, cedar. I film these separately because while they're going in the same customer's house, they're two very different projects. And this one I originally wasn't going to film because it's a very simple process. But um, accent walls are really coming back into fashion, so I've noticed a lot of people are doing that. And you could utilize this method in order to make any sort of style accent wall if you like. This is obviously simple planking, but I know miter, miter joints are pretty popular today. So this material started off as a 1x6x8. This is designed for planking for a deck. It is cedar, so it's going to be a little more expensive than some other materials. But like I said with the bench, if you want to make this out of regular pine or Douglas fir, obviously the finish will be a little bit different, but you can make it out of that at a fraction of the cost. Now, even though this is one by material, a lot of times that means when you go to buy a one by six, the, the actual dimensions are three quarters, but this is a one inch uh, piece of planking. So I was able to get three of these panels out of each board because these are a quarter inch thick, which was really nice. I couldn't only be able to get two with three quarters and then it would have become a very expensive project. But essentially I just cut that, ripped that material down to size. And then on this edge piece, I obviously don't have a, a rabbit on the front side, but on the back side, I put a rabbit joint and then on the rest of them, I put one on the front side as well so that all of these planks inter, interlock. And the reason that you do that, even though it is added work, is because especially since it's been staying colder this spring, my shop uh, doesn't have HVAC. So when I bring this to the customer's house, I'm going to let it acclimate to the space, which is a very important thing, especially if you're a DIYer. I'll probably let this set in our house for about a week because this is going to move when it comes out of my shop and goes into her climate controlled home. If I take this right to her house this time of year, this stuff will all expand because it's going to be warmer in her home than it is in my shop. And that usually equates to there being more humidity in the air at her house, which is actually what affects the um, moisture absorption of the wood and what makes it shrink and uh, as well as expand. But anyway, um, that is super important when doing something like this otherwise you'll get huge gaps in the lumber but essentially the rabbit is supposed to conceal that a little bit so when this stuff does shrink and grow because it will in her house uh, naturally as the humidity changes throughout the year instead of the shrinking and you seeing gaps and seeing the wall you'll see the planking so that's kind of uh, the purpose for doing this and having them all kind of inter interlock together but like I said, a pretty simple process. This will be a short video. Um, I've, uh, I, like I said, you could. This is going to be a fairly simple backdrop. But once you have the planking made, you can really slice these up however you want. And since they're so thin, they're a quarter of an inch. Uh, they won't shift and move on you as much as say something attaching like something like this to the wall. That's that's fairly thick. So these boards are about five and a half inches wide. My saw blade only goes up to three inches. So I'm gonna have to cut this in two passes. In order to make it as safe as possible, I have my tall fence in place as well as a feather board. And I just have that tall fence set so that this will cut a quarter inch off. Doing it this way means I don't have to move my fence a ton of times. This is cedar. So except for the couple little knots, this is not a very dense lumber. So I have a nicer saw blade in here. I believe this is a 60 tooth blade and it cut through this stuff quite nicely. So you can see I put one cut on the bottom. I could flip it and then cut the, the essentially the top side, which was the first pass. And then I have my piece. You can see it ends up as a really nice cut. You'll get a little bit of this in the middle where the saw blade meets. As long as you don't have big grooves in the wood, um, this process should work perfectly fine for you. And then I could go through and do, I believe I had three boards. So you could go through and cut one side off of all those boards. And then you could see I don't have to move the fence, but the wood's now skinnier once I cut one side off of all of them. So I just adjust my feather board over tighten it again and then I can make the exact same cut 
on the opposite side. So I'm essentially cutting a quarter inch off both ends of these pieces, which will uh, kind of represent the top sides and bottom side of a sandwich, and then I'll be left with that middle piece. So I'm making extra for this project because once this lumber gets pretty thin, it does get a little delicate, especially once you put those rabbits in place. And this stuff did have knots in it. So I, I do, I cut up, I like I said, I think it was um, three boards, which gave me nine pieces. And these uh, only have to be about six feet tall. So I cut those down to, to start with. So then once I'm going to do the middle, you can see there is a little bit of ridge left on this. So I'm just going to lightly sand that down so that I have a flat surface to work off of when it's riding against my tall fence. If you leave these bumps in place when you go to cut this, make this last cut, it might not come out as accurately as the first, the first couple passes. So it's worth it to lightly sand down that ridge. I, this is a nicer grade of material, so I didn't joint or plane any of this before. Before I started I started right at the table saw so you can see because I'm removing an eighth inch kerf with all those pieces that one inch lumber was just about perfect I'm really only removing about an eighteenth of an inch off of this last piece in order to get it to be a quarter of an inch and then here is my stack well, the problem with this is because these were deck boards, the edges were all rounded over, so I'm going to have to cut those off to make them square. I'm essentially going to be jointing these boards on the table saw during that process, and because they're so thin, it actually made these cuts, uh, these boards pretty straight. Buying them off the rack, these edges usually aren't perfectly straight, so even without the rounded over edge, I probably would have done this anyway, so there's no gaps in my paneling. So you can see I set the fence just just shy of, of that uh, that bend so that I move I remove the least amount of material as possible. Now the span of this piece is only about 36 inches wide, so I needed just enough boards to get me to that 36 inches, but like I said, I made extras. And then uh, even though the middle portion is going to have two straight sides, I'm going to cut them all down to the same size so they're nice and uniform. So you can see I'm just running these through and removing that one edge. Once I have that edge removed on all of the sides, I could move my fence over just a little bit, same process as before, and then I could rip off that other edge. So you can see how this, this essentially is jointing these edges as well, because I'm running one side against the fence, flipping it, then running the other side against the fence as well. If you're using material that starts off cupped or bowed, or um, this this stuff that you get from the hardware store is is already kind of nicer lumber it's already been surfaced if you're using rough lumber that um, you probably will have to joint these before doing this process so then at the end before i continue this is when i'm going to sand everything nicely you could see especially the middle boards they have a little bit more of a ridge in it than some of the other boards making sure to take all that down so everything's flat so that when I cut my rabbits, they're the perfect depth across the board. If you have any highs or low spots, that dado blade won't run perfectly down your boards and it will translate to high and low spots in your rabbits on the ends. You could send these through a planer, but my planer won't plane material this thin. I'd have to make a sled to mount it to. So it was, I, it was easier to just use the belt sander. So you can see I have, I think this was, um, a half inch dado stack in there and because it's a quarter inch material I'm essentially making a lap joint on the edge so I'm only removing an eighth of an inch which is half of a quarter inch so when those two pieces meet that eighth of an inch will form that quarter inch on the edge I'm going to send a test piece through to make sure that depth is perfect this is a really important part of the process making sure it's perfect so that there's no high or low spots that first cut was obviously too thick so I have some key stock laying around. This is eighth inch key stock, and you could see I, I made those cuts until that key stock was just about perfectly fit in there, which um, signifies that it's going to be an eighth inch cut. And then once I did that, I could just send all my boards through. Obviously you're sending it through and you're cutting one on the bottom side flipping it over and making sure to cut one on the opposite side and that's how all these panels will interlock. So you can see that this is kind of a detailed process 
but it's worth it at the end of the day because um, your wall will look seamless once this is all in place. This is just kind of a, a pan out of that process because these boards are thin at this point. You could see I'm kind of curving them on the table saw to make sure the pressure over the blade is, is pretty pretty thorough throughout the whole thing. Some of them I did have to run through twice just to make sure I, I got them perfect, but you can see what that finished edge look like looks like. So then I'm also going to have a header on this piece, which I didn't show a ton on here, but I'm using a little bit of a thicker piece of lumber. This is half inch. I cut this off of the leftover stock and I'm putting a quarter inch rabbit on this one so it sits on top of all these boards and this quarter inch rabbit will hide the joint at the top. So if all the boards aren't perfectly the same height, this will essentially hide it. Now the depth of the rabbits weren't super important. I wanted to keep these boards as wide as possible, but like I said, I think I had a half inch dado stack in there, but I only cut about three eighths of an inch into the sides. And then you can see all my panels link into place. This one panel on the far end, I left the edge flat. I didn't add an extra rabbit, just so the panel in the corner will be as sturdy as possible. And you can see how that header is gonna go on the top side of all of those pieces. And then just a close-up detail of that lap joint, essentially, making sure that everything fits nicely. I didn't really have any cleanup to do on these. They all fit together pretty well. And then another look, essentially, at that joint. And like I said, once you make these planks, um, the quarter-inch material won't move on you as much as thicker material. It will still move on you, but not nearly as much. Um, the sky's kind of the limit with how you can interlock these and uh, designs you can make. If you want to interlock the edges, you could cut rabbits on the edges as well. But you can see once I once uh, once I ran those to the table saw, they fit seamlessly. There's really no joints or anything in these boards, which is what I was going for. So then the finish on this, I'm using water locks just like the bench. It's a nice, easy to apply finish. The first coat, the wood really is gonna absorb this water lock, so I usually put that on with a paintbrush, and you'll see the next day, compared to what it looks like now, that lumber really absorbs that first coat. So put that first coat on pretty liberally. So that's what it looks like right before it's dried. And then the next day when I came in, you could see just how much it absorbed and how the sheen's gone. So at this point, I'll keep putting this on with a paintbrush because it's easy. And then I have a white abrasive prep pad that I'll rub over the top, which essentially is kind of sanding or buffing the surface as I go. And I'll put on four coats of this, which is the recommendation for softwood. And then I'll flip these over and do the exact same thing to the back, especially with water locks. You wanna apply finish to both sides as the piece, as well as I'll mostly put it on all the joints as well. So if this does move, uh, the joints will have the same finish.